We turn now to Dallas and that case of Ebola here in the U.S. and word this evening that at least 50 Americans are now being monitored. Their temperature taken twice a day. Hazmat crews on the scene suiting up, wrapping the family car today, hosing down, in fact, as they left the home, where family members of that patient, Thomas Eric Dunn, are still under quarantine. And look at that home there. As the camera pulls out tonight, you'll be able to see around that dense apartment complex, homes really as far as the eye can see, a packed neighborhood there. The CDC now going door to door. ABC Cecilia Vega is live in Dallas again tonight with new outrage because Cecilia, these hazmat crews arrived five days after he was hospitalized. David, good evening to you. That is the big question out here. Why did it take this long? Officials here saying that they had a hard time finding a cleanup crew willing to go inside this apartment. One finally did step forward. You can see this truck right here over my shoulder. They're called the cleanup guys. A quarantined family on the move tonight, escorted to a secret location. Their apartment, the first American home ever tainted by Ebola, now being decontaminated. This cleanup crew has finally arrived. It's going to take six hours and a team of people to clean this two-bedroom apartment. The hazmat team protected in hooded chemical resistant suits taped on so nothing seeps in. They wear face shields, two layers of gloves, breathing in filtered air through these masks. Outside, the car Thomas Eric Duncan rode in, covered with plastic, a tarp on the ground, and shielding the apartment's front door. Inside the two-bedroom apartment, the team collecting all Duncan's personal belongings, entering his bedroom, removing his bed, triple-bagging his sheets, blankets, and pillows, moving to the bathroom, disinfecting all surfaces with bleach, collecting the towels, scouring all high-traffic areas he may have touched, like the couch where he might have watched TV, everything placed in secure containers and removed from the apartment. Everything incinerated. The cleanup will last several days. Duncan's four family members, including a child and his girlfriend, moved into an anonymous donor's home because no one else would take them. People in this complex are scared. The CDC speaking to 100 people who may have had contact with Duncan, 50 of them being monitored closely, their temperatures checked twice a day. 10 people who had what's considered to be dangerous contact with Duncan, now considered to be high risk. All those people healthy so far, but they are telling CDC disease detectives that I spoke to today, they're now concerned about the stigma that could come with being linked to Ebola. David, whether they contract this virus or not. All right, Cecilia Vega, excellent reporting there this week. Our thanks to you and our chief medical editor, Dr. Richard Besser, arriving at the airport in Liberia, preparing to come home now. And we wondered, are they checking people as they leave Liberia to make sure they're not sick? And here's what Dr. Besser encountered. We've been here a week. It's time to go home. We're heading to the airport. The front lines on the battle to keep Ebola out of the United States. You know, with so much Ebola here in Liberia, people want to know, can you really keep it from leaving? I want to see how they're trying. Driving in, guards check my temperature. I fill out a detailed questionnaire. Fever, no. Headache, no. Vomiting, no. Since I was fully covered when in the wards, nothing that we did here as journalists put us in the high risk category. This is a really good screening questionnaire, but it's only going to work if people read it carefully and tell the truth. But we know Eric Duncan, the patient in Dallas, did not reveal he'd been in close contact with an Ebola victim. Lots of checkpoints to make sure that people who are sick are not leaving the country. Another checkpoint, a visual inspection to see if I look sick. My temperature taken a second time with that infrared thermometer. All clear. But so much depending on trust and a thermometer. Time to go home. And Rich is with us now. It's actually reassuring to see that, Rich, the checkpoints at the airport there, that they check your temperature not once but twice before you prepare to head back. But the next step is coming home. And I know your wife, your family waiting for you. We are waiting for you. And so what do you look for yourself, a doctor having witnessed what you've seen there as you now come home? Yeah, I'm going to follow the CDC recommendations to the letter. And people coming from West Africa, I'm going, to, I'm going to take my temperature twice a day. If I develop any symptoms, start to feel unwell in any way, I'm going to call the doctor. That way, no one's at risk. All right, Rich Besser at a packed airport there.